Hey everybody, my name is Kim Siever. Welcome back to my channel. Just wanted to give you a heads up that today's video is going to be longer than most, but I think the information I'm going to provide is important and needs to be shared. So I appreciate you being patient with me, and I hope you find the information I share with you valuable. Last week, Dr. M. Peel, a researcher at the University of Lethbridge, presented to City Council the Urban Social Issues Study, a study into the impacts the Lethbridge supervised consumption site has had on the local neighborhood. Dr. Peel's research in general focuses on homeless, substance using, and and at-risk populations, social disorder in communities, health services for marginalized patient populations, and harm reduction services. This is important to note, as I've seen harm reduction advocates try to discredit the research she did for this study, mostly as a reaction to the media coverage of the study, and not as a reaction to the study itself. The study blew up on social media, with traditional media framing it as crime and so-called social disorder being on the rise since the SCS Open. Jason Kenney, like Likewise, last on to that narrative, which boosted it among his followers, many of which opposed the SCS specifically and harm reduction generally. However, there are a few findings that I thought were important to highlight, some of which others have covered, some of which very few are discussing. Number one, it studied perception of social disorder, not actual social disorder. This study did not study empirical data. It did not, for example, analyze actual crime data. What it did study was, according to the executive summary, perceptions and observations of social disorder by business owners and operators in downtown Lethbridge. This is important to highlight because, as others have noted, this is simply a measurement of what businesses in the area think they've seen. Not only that, but it required them to recall what they saw. Take this question from the survey, for example, which was sent out five times. In the area around your business, when did you, your staff, or your customers see or experience the following activities? Respondents were then asked to indicate whether they saw or experienced the activity never, more than three months ago, within the last three months, within the last month, or within the last day. This relies on the business owner's own perceptions, as well as their own memory, neither of which are testable or verifiable. And as the researcher noted, experiences and observations were not consistent even between adjacent businesses, which suggests that observing, perceiving, and experiencing social disorder is impacted by many other factors. Number two, the top five observed activities were non-threatening. This study didn't just ask about crime, it also asked about benign behavior such as people just standing around in the area. In fact, the most popular observation made by survey respondents was just that. People just hanging out, not doing anything particularly harmful or threatening. Of all the activities the survey asked about, loitering was the most common observation. As well, the top five behaviors reported, loitering, being intoxicated, yelling, sleeping, using drugs, are all benign activities, none of which are threatening to the general public and are indicative of larger social issues than whether the SCS exists. People have been loitering, intoxicated, sleeping, yelling, and using addictive substances in public for much longer than the SCS has existed. Number three, social disorder increased in all areas, not just around the SCS. When you differentiate the activities based on the three sub-areas of the study, 100 meters around the SCS, 500 meters around the SCS, and downtown proper, you find that the area closest to the SCS doesn't actually have a significant higher proportion of recalled observances of social disorder. Take loitering, for example. The mean for all three sub-areas is between three and four. Same goes for the other top four behaviors, public intoxication between three and four for all sub-areas, drug usage between two and three for all sub-areas, and drug dealing between one and two for all areas. In fact, some of the behaviors measured by the study, drug dealing, urinating, defecating, panhandling, sex work, yelling, sleeping, and trespassing, increased in all three sub-areas. If the SCS was the cause of an increase in social disorder near the facility, we wouldn't expect social disorder to increase for the 500 meter area or for the downtown proper area. That tells me that something other than the SCS is causing the increase in activity, or more specifically, specifically the increase in recollected observation of the activities. One potential cause could be the drug crisis, which like so many other cities in Canada, Lethbridge is experiencing. The study's author highlights that the increasing incidence and prevalence of drug use is largely inseparable statistically from the impacts of the SES. 
In other words, you can't separate drug usage from the drug crisis and attribute it solely to the SES. Number four, the Lethbridge Police Service refused to provide crime data. As I mentioned, this study focused on gathering observations based on respondent recollection. And while it did have some empirical data, dot callouts are just needle pickup and EMS callouts, it lacked empirical crime data, which could have seriously augmented the findings. However, the lack of empirical data was not by design. The researchers submitted three formal requests to the Lethbridge Police Service for crime and calls for service data for that study area. The lack of this information prompted Dr. Peel to caution study readers that the data is incomplete due to the failure of a key stakeholder to participate meaningfully. As such, the findings cannot be used in isolation for decision making. In conclusion, this study did not determine that crime or social disorder objectively increased downtown or near the SCS. Instead, it determined that people thought it was increasing. And while it might indeed be increasing objectively, this study did not find that. As well, those observations show increase in activity throughout the downtown and the Upper East Side, not just around the SES, which indicates that something else is causing the increases, either separate from or in conjunction with the SES. Getting rid of the SES clearly will not eliminate any of this behavior, perceived or otherwise, from the downtown. Thanks for watching. Thanks to all these subscribers and Patreon patrons who make this video possible. You can follow me online at seaver.ca slash Kim. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. If you appreciate the videos I share here on YouTube, the posts I write on my blog, and the content I share on my other social media accounts, please consider making a monthly donation either through PayPal or Patreon. If you agree with the points I raise in my video, please give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below why. Please share my video and subscribe to my channel. Please also click on the notification bell so you receive notifications whenever I upload a new video. I look forward to talking to you again soon.